Okay, so we're going to talk about some factors that affect solubility. You may have heard the phrase like dissolves like before. We talked about it in class uh, last week. And that really just means that polar substances are going to dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar solutes will dissolve in nonpolar solvents. Um, the more, and, and really that's just saying the more similar the intermolecular interactions, uh, the more likely one substance will be soluble in another. So let's look at something like um, ethanol and water here. So here's ethanol. Here's ethanol. Um, it has these OH groups here. This is an OH group over here. So ethanol will form a hydrogen bond with another ethanol molecule. Um, water, here's water over here. Water can also form a hydrogen bond with ethanol. And so ethanol will dissolve in water. And so we say water and ethanol are, um, they're, they're miscible. They're pairs of liquids that mix in all portions. So it, it doesn't really matter if you have more water or more ethanol, it will, um, it will dissolve and you'll, you'll form a nice solution there. Um, let's look at some other things here that have to do with intermolecular forces and, um, and solubility. So glucose, this is a, a picture of glucose. So C6H12O6, you probably learned about that in biology. Glucose has a whole bunch of OH groups on it. So this can form a lot of hydrogen bonds, which is going to make it pretty soluble in water. And so sugar, shocking, sugar um, will dissolve in water. Um, over here, this is cyclohexane, and you'll learn about this in organic chemistry. Um, wherever you have a just a, an intersection of all these lines, that means you have a carbon. This is the, the line structure formula. So you have just carbons and carbon carbon hydrogen bonds. This is really nonpolar. Um, so because it's nonpolar, it only has London forces, right? This guy only has London forces. Um, and so he's only going to dissolve in um, another solution that's that's nonpolar. This guy is polar, so he'll dissolve in water. He can form hydrogen bonds. He has very similar intermolecular interactions. Um, some more real-world examples of, of where we find solubility. Here we go. We have um, vitamins, and you may have learned about vitamins in biology or nutrition or some other class that you've taken, um, or your mom just may tell you to eat your, drink, eat your vitamins, take your vitamins. Uh, vitamin A is, uh, it turns out vitamin A, down here this is what vitamin A looks like, it has a whole bunch of carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds. There's a really smaller polar group over here, but so much more of the molecule is nonpolar that overall vitamin A is nonpolar. Um, and so you would expect this to be a, a fat soluble vitamin. It's going to dissolve in, in fats, not so much in, uh, in water. And so over here you have uh, vitamin C, which is, which is water soluble. It has a whole bunch of OH groups. You see all these OH groups? That's going to make it want to dissolve in water. So this is a water soluble um, vitamin, and vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin. So you may have heard about vitamin A, um, or, or maybe you've heard about beta carotene. Beta carotene is a precursor for, for vitamin A. Um, and you find beta carotene in things like carrots, and you, your, your mom may have told you, my mom told me, uh, carrots are good for your eyes. You eat some carrots and you'll have good vision. And there's some truth to that. Um, your body converts beta carotene into vitamin A, and then vitamin A um, is, does, does help your vision. And there's a, it plays a key part in your vision. Um, so. Vitamin A, since it's, it's fat soluble, you, you'll store it up in your fat. So you can, um, the more of it you you eat, the more you will store. Um, that doesn't happen with vitamin C. Vitamin C, you can only feel it, your body will, will take it, use it however much it needs, and then it'll, since it's water soluble, you'll just end up um, peeing it out. So if you drink a whole bunch of uh, orange juice, you take a whole bunch of those vitamin C tablets, you just have some really expensive urine in, in the end because uh, you can't store it up. Uh, but the, the fat soluble ones you will store up and again you find these in carrots Did you ever see a, a little kid that ate too many carrots and they start to turn orange? Uh, they turn orange because beta carotene is, uh, is Because of the beta carotene that, that has like an orange pigment you store it in your fat cells close to the, the surface of your skin and, and then the little kid looks like he has a really bad um, Really bad like fake tan uh, so once they stop eating all those carrots or, or sweet potatoes, then it, uh, it goes away and the color just fades. So let's try this exercise here, um, kind of building on what we just learned. Which one of the following do you think would be most soluble in water? So pause it, take a second, think about it. Uh, what are we really looking for? We're trying to figure out which one has the most similar intermolecular forces to, to water. Uh, so water has um, can hydrogen bond, so we're looking for things that can hydrogen bond. Um, here, this guy, that's a hydrogen bonding group, that's good. Uh, this molecule has two of those. So because he has two OHs here, 
this one's going to be the one that uh, is the most soluble in water.